you look so good. You look amazing. Thank you. Love you. I look really handsome too. Thank you. Are we allowed to kiss before the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you want me to spin? Do a little spin. Well, don't, just don't tear your thing. I love right. it. You look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. I don't know what else we do. Take it to a moment where the fields are painted. Trees are filled with memories of the feelings never told. When the evening pulls the sun down and the day is almost through, oh, the whole world is sleeping, but my world is you. Can I be close to you?
Welcome, one and all. Please sit down and thank you for coming to share with us this amazing day. Okay. As, I'm, as Emily's grandmother and a great fan of Jake's, I know your parents have provided you with a secure foundation of love and trust. It is clear together you are a formidable couple. Emily, my only granddaughter, I love you with all my heart. I cherish you. You are the light of my life. This day is so special. This is a wonderful day. You possess you, you possess an intense light with the quiet beauty which attracts others. Your loyalty and love for Jake is unwavering, as is his for you, right? Both of you care deeply and passionately for each other, right? You make each other laugh. And you think outside of yourself. You help each other in ways that are obvious and unnoticed, but always appreciated. We are now at the point of the ceremony where, we will where you will share your vows. I ask you to remember that love, which is rooted in trust and acceptance, will be the foundation of an abiding and deepening relationship. No other vows are more sacred than thou, those who now assume. By keeping your vows, you take here today out of a desire to love and be loved 
Your life will have joy and your home that you establish will be a place where you both will find direction for your growth, for your freedom and for your responsibility. Okay, now you have bells to read. <laughs> <clears throat> Jake, let's take it back to nearly seven years ago. I can vividly recall the fluorescent lighting of the Newark airport as I sat in my terminal waiting for my flight to England where I'd be spending my junior spring semester abroad. A sense of longing to stay in the States overpowered my anticipation to leave though, because two weeks prior you asked me to be your girlfriend, but I knew I was in love with you long before that. Yet to England I went for four months. You were surviving on the McDonald's two for five deal at the time, so I knew that purchasing a, a round trip ticket to visit me wasn't in the cards. But we made it work even with the, with the help of technology, even though someone spilled beer on your laptop, effectively destroying it just two weeks into the semester. <laughs> Most college students who spend four months jet setting around Europe aren't counting down the days until their return to suburbia, but I was running to greet you in Geneva at your college graduation after being apart for so long was pure elation. Being held in your arms felt like home. It still does and will always. You're my absolute best friend. I've always been totally comfortable being my weird goofy self around you and you've reciprocated your refreshing authenticity from the start. We've gone through some of our most formative years together, evolving exponentially in tandem, changing zip codes, earning degrees, making thousands of memories and leaning on each other when the weight of the world felt too heavy to carry alone. You've been my rock through it all and my love for you grows stronger with each passing year. As your wife, I vow to stand alongside you for the rest of our days. I promise to be patient and to always hold you in the highest regard. To love you fiercely at your best and at your worst with the innate sense of knowing that you will do the same. Love is choosing to bear witness to another person's life and I want you to know that I will choose you every day. Thank you. I'll try to top that, but let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Mine starts similar, but nearly seven years ago, you quite literally, <laughs> it's funny that we use the same one. Uh, you quite literally fell off a table and into my life. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember walking you home after the party that night, feeling enamored by your presence, thinking, wow, there's something really special about you. I also remember, a few minutes later, feeling absolutely crushed when you told me you'd be going abroad. Um, I knew before you went across the pond to England that I couldn't just let you go, so we did the completely normal thing and decided to start uh, officially dating with 3,000 miles and a six-hour time difference. Looking back on this now, I think that that leap of faith in our relationship was the best de decision I have ever made. This is, of course, was merely practice for the years of long distance that we would endure after that. However, I wouldn't trade the many hours spent traveling to see you for anything in the world, and I think it made us stronger as a couple. Over the years, we've had so many good times and adventures. I've gotten to know you for everything you are and have grown to love you more and more each day. I love, <laughs> I love how you never fail to put a smile on my face whenever, you, whenever I see you after a long day. Then, the subsequent smile on your face when we snuggle on the couch to watch the newest episode of Ghost Adventures. <laughs> I, <laughs> I admire your passion for everything you do, whether it's your job or just making plans for a fun night out. I love that you are one of the few people who can make me truly laugh, and not just a loud exhale, but like uncontrollably laugh, <laughs> sometimes at the strangest things. <laughs> I love how caring you are, <laughs> caring you are for your friends and family, myself, and of course, Maggie. I love how you remind me <laughs> to brush my teeth every night. <laughs> I love how supportive you are and how you inspire me to be my very best. Um, most importantly though, I love how easy it feels to love you as my partner and best friend. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> these, among the many other countless reasons, have me feeling honored to commit my life to you and make these promises in front of our fam friends and family. Mm -hmm. Emily, I promise to love you always and protect you and keep you safe. 
I promise to cook you your favorite gourmet meals whenever you want. Um, I promise to fill up your water bottle or rub your back <laughs> when you need it, <laughs> even if I'm tired. Um, I'll try my best to only make you watch sports when it's a really big game. <laughs> I promise to be your ear or counsel when you need advice or just want to vent about a hard day at work. I will always try to make you laugh when, with a weird noise or silly pun when you're feeling down. I will always be your biggest supporter or an, any challenges that you may encounter through life. I will always strive to strengthen our relationship with open communication, honesty, and mutual respect. I promise that even when times are tough, through sickness and in health, I will always take care of you and be by your side. And finally, I promise to be unwaveringly loyal to you to the end of my days. Emily, you're my best friend, and I love my, love my life. I'm the luckiest guy in the whole world to have the privilege of marrying you today. <laughs> I'm so excited for what our life together looks like and the happiness we'll bring each other. Beautiful. Well done. Okay, find myself here. Okay, now we're going to do the exchange of rings. Somebody has to ring. Have the ring. David's got the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried. You should. T I'll take Emily's and then give. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna take that? Off? I'm gonna. Oh yeah. You gonna go for? You can yeah. go first. You go. Yeah. I'm just gonna move this guy. Does it go? Just, just a little. Does it go like it. this? <laughs> or like this? Okay. Repeat after me. Okay. <laughs> With this ring, <laughs> I marry you and bind my life to yours. With this ring, I marry you and I bind my life to yours. It is a symbol of my eternal love. It is a symbol of my eternal love. My everlasting friendship. My everlasting friendship. And the promise of all your tomorrows. And the promise of all your tomorrows. I gotta put the engagement ring on me first. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready. I'm ready. Okay. With this ring, with this ring, I marry you and bind my life to yours. I marry you and bind my life to yours. It is a symbol of my eternal love. It is a symbol of my eternal love. My everlasting friendship. My everlasting friendship. And the promise of all my tomorrows. And the promise of all my tomorrows. Now, by the power vested in me by the state of New York, it is my great honor to declare you husband and wife. You may now kiss. Okay. Now everybody can stand. It is my distinct honor to present to you, for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Jake Louie, husband and wife.
pray that you believe me When I say this love will never fade away Oh, because you are the best thing You are the best thing You are the best thing Ever happened Promising like the spring to walk on out the door. Our hearts are strong and our hearts are kind. Let me tell you just exactly what is on my mind. You are the best thing. You are the best.
Welcome, everybody. In case I didn't meet all of you, I'm Brian, the FOB, the FOB, the proud father of the bride. In the words of Albus Dumbledore, I have a few remarks to make before we all get addled by this excellent feast. I thought I got over stage right a while ago, so bear with me if I stumble or if I get emotional. First, a shout out to the officiant, my mother in law, Eleanor. Let's give her a round of applause. Nicely done. I'd like to thank everyone for sacrificing a beautiful three-day weekend to be here with us to celebrate Emily and Jake's wedding. I know a lot of you came a long distance, and I really appreciate it. And hats off to the staff at the mansion and the vendors. Nice job. Emily and Jake, you chose wisely. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the close family members who are here and who have helped shape Emily into the fantastic woman she is. Numero uno, Bugs, Chaloops, the love of my life, Stacy. My firstborn, the man I want to be more like in my next life, Jonathan, give us a wave. The Mo Fob, the mother of the father of the bride, Loretta, give us a wave. My mother-in-law, the aforementioned officiant, Eleanor, and <laughs> Emily's aunts and uncles, Joe and Jamie. Where are you guys at? <laughs> Shannon, give us a wave. Donna and Paul. And Emily's super cool cousins, Elias, Jake, Mia, and Summer. And of course, Melissa and Joe, Jake's parents, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. And Emma, where are you? It is so sweet to see how close you are to your brother and you've been a true friend to Emily and thank you so much for that. And Jake's Nana, Maureen. And for all the other extended family on both sides of the aisle, He was the first super cool cousin. <laughs> okay. Now, I lost my place. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the family. Let's hear it for the family. Jake, I'll get to you in a minute. And just a moment of silence for some people who loved Emily very desperately, but can't be with us. They're not here with us anymore. Aunt Debbie and Grandpa Herb. And for a grandpa she never got to meet, but she would have melted his heart, Grandpa Eli. So if we could just have a moment, please. So what can I tell you about my darling daughter? Those of you who know her well, will attest to how thoughtful, loving, and sincere she is. You know, she's got a wicked, blistering sense of humor. You know that when she's happy, which is almost all the time, she lights up any room. And when she's sad, your heart aches, wanting to make things right for her again. I could rattle off her accomplishments of how she's doing such a great job en route to her career in healthcare, or how she collects amazing friends with deep, long-lasting bonds. Although, Jake, I gotta say, your posse is epic. <laughs> it's looking like a lot of football and boys' nights out. Are you sure you're up for this, Emmy? <laughs> I could also just talk about how proud we are of Emily and how grateful Stacy and I are to the universe that you chose us as your parents. But what I really want to try to express is how it feels to be her father. So to do so, I thought I'd talk about nicknames and throw in a few movie references. Emily and I have watched so many movies together. We can stop the world and binge watch Harry Potter for the hundredth time. Guilty pleasure, horror movies. But we're not 100% in sync. When Emily was young, she asked me what the scariest movie was ever, and I said, hands down, it's The Exorcist. So she was on me to watch that with me. But Mama laid down the law, 
and said, no way, not until she's such and such an age. Emily kept the pressure on. I caved. We watched it. I thought I was going to be in big trouble. And what actually happened was Emily laughed. <laughs> and Raiders of the Lost Ark, one of the best movies ever. Not exactly a horror movie, but I thought Emily would get a kick out of it when the guy's face melts and then head explodes at the end. And about 15 minutes into it, she was rolling her eyes and I couldn't even bribe her to finish that. So I guess what I'm trying to get to with this is that when you look at the world through your child's eyes, some things don't age too well. Some things get a little dated. So not wanting to appear dated in my daughter's eyes, I decided to try the things she likes, even going so far as to try to understand the Twilight Saga. <laughs> um, Jake, you may be the love of Emily's life, but I hate to tell you that you're not her first aching heart crush. That goes to Robert Pattinson. <laughs> I think mom and I took you to one and watched it with you. And I tried to watch the other two on my own. And I'm not saying it made me a better person, but I think it made me a better dad. And then you've all heard about Emily's uh, fascination with ghost hunting genre. I will leave that to you and the new most important man in your life to enjoy together. So first nickname to discuss, the easiest, Principesa. We got that one from watching Life is Beautiful, and it's not meant to refer to any of the bad stuff that happens in the movie. It's just, Principessa, you're my little princess, and I'm glad you met your Prince Charming. The earliest nickname, and the one we still use uh, today, Geezy, requires a little more explanation. Emily, the day Mom and I met you was absolutely unbelievable. You decided to show up a little early. So I remember when we called the obstetrician, the obstetrician told my wife, relax, have a glass of wine. And fast forward a couple hours later and we're rushing to the hospital. Without getting too graphic, it's safe to say, while I was parking the car, Stacy's water broke on the way up the elevator and one of the staff said, this one's coming out with roller skates on. And a couple minutes later, there you were. It happened so fast, you were so small, and I fell in love with you totally, instantly, and forever. And then like in the movies, when there's a plot twist, or dark clouds go in front of the sun, or the music changes to a minor key, I knew something was wrong. The staff stopped their banter in the OR. Things got quiet. And you know, from the time of mom's first cramp, until you sprang into the world, that happened in a heartbeat. But that moment of silence and labor and delivery, that lasted an eternity. I've never felt such terror or dread like that. <clears throat> Turns out her early arrival meant that her lungs weren't quite ready to do the work on their own. And thank God the staff and the medical technology was there to get you through it and everything happened well in the end. I'm not bringing this up to be dramatic, but just to paint a picture of how it feels to be your dad and how in one day you made me feel pure joy and absolute fear. So thus began the era of Emily, or as we called her for quite a while and still do sometimes, Geezy. Emily, of course, grew up to be a beautiful girl and a gorgeous woman, but in those first few days, she was a little wrinkly. I thought one of my son's best friends, David, would be here. He's not. That's too bad. But when he saw her shortly after coming home, he took a look at her. She scrunched up her face, and he looked at us, and he said something like, she looks like an old geezer. <laughs> so that stuck. Geezer became geezy, and there you have it. And finally, there's Little Miss. Emily and I were watching Bicentennial Man when she was very young. Not the best movie. I looked it up. It's got a 38% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> And I forget all the details of the story, but it's basically about a family who gets a robot named Andrew who aspires to become human. And in the end, sad stuff happens. He chooses to die because his wife dies. But anyway, Andrew has this great relationship with the young girl in the family, and he calls her Little Miss. So it's all sad. It's a tearjerker when Andrew outlives Little Miss, and then Andrew dies in the end. I thought, okay, nice movie. And it really struck a chord with Emily, and she cried, and she cried. 
And I started bawling, so it's a super important movie to me. It sounds a little corny to say that daughters hold a special place in their dad's heart, but it is true. And that's not to say that sons don't. Of course they do. John, you know they do. But Emily, Principessa, my geezy little miss, it's an awesome and special power you have over me, so thank you for not abusing it. <laughs> I guess the point of all of this is when something is meaningful to Emily, when something's important to Emily, it's immediately important and meaningful to me. Which brings us to Jake. <laughs> Jake, my daughter told me she likes you, so I guess I like you too. <laughs> Seriously, I'm thrilled to welcome you to the family. I could go on about what a fine man you are, about how you're ambitious, but in a nice, understated way, how you're super level-headed, unless you're losing at Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> Which is all great stuff. You know, the concept of giving a daughter away, that's also kind of dated. So what really matters the most to me is it, how happy you make my Emily. Thank you for that, and I'm proud that you're right, my son-in-law. So I don't have a glass, but please raise a glass and join me in a toast to Emily and Jake. Don't they look amazing? <laughs> Emily and Jake, may you find all the happiness and success in the world. May you trust each other completely and be best friends forever. Thank you. And for the Harry Potter fans out there, may your marriage be like the sword of Gryffindor and take in only that which makes it stronger. Cheers. And bring on the grandbabies. <laughs> Have another big round of applause. Chris McDonald, everybody. Now we've got the best man, David Eventhal. Give him a nice round of applause. All right. I've never done this before, so bear with me. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out to celebrate Emily and Jake, or as I've always called him, Louie. My name is David, and I'm Louie's best man. While I'm honored Lou chose me as his best man, I really feel like I'm more of a representative of a group of guys from Natick High School, the fellows over here, that call ourselves Louie's best friends. <laughs> Louis, Louis the first of us to get married, so we're all extremely excited to be here and take advantage of the first of many open bars. <laughs> I honestly don't remember the first time I met Louis. I just kind of remember being at at your house in the game room, which would become the default hangout spot for our entire high school crew. Everyone was always welcome at the Louie household. For most of us, if we wanted to have 10 idiots over to wreak havoc at our house, we'd kind of have to like, you know, ask our parents, negotiate something, not at the Louis. They just, we just kind of show up and wreak havoc. Again, Melissa, Charles is really sorry about that lamp. A big part of the reason we knew we could always go to Louis is that Louis is the most go with the flow guy I know. He's always down to grab a beer, or watch a game, or grab a beer, or have dinner, or just hang out and have a few beers. In recent years, however, there's become one very key exception to this rule, and that's Emily. Louis puts Emily first. He's always cognizant of her of her wants, her desires. She knows what she wants to do. He wants to make sure that whatever we're doing, Emily's happy doing it too. This requires creative compromises between the two of you. For example, Louis enjoys watching football. 
Emily likes playing games, which has led to the creation of a, a staple of our Sunday football experience, the hair under the helmet drinking game. I can explain the rules to anyone later. Emily has actually had a much more tremendous impact on Louis. Uh, Louis, when he's with the guys, is unabashedly himself. Um, Emily loves him for exactly that man. Her passion and support for him have gi has given him the confidence to show that version of himself to everyone. Emily's love for Louis is so fierce, I would caution anyone who might have a bad word to say about Louis. She's an avid fan of true crime and will put some of that knowledge to good use. In fact, Emily has been known to ask her friends, quote, what their favorite way of disposing a body is. Emily and Louis' willingness to fight for each other and their relationship will undoubtedly serve them well in this next stage of their life. Louis, Emily, we're all very lucky to be involved in a special day. I'm excited to watch you learn and grow together. The Louis family has always been very inviting to me, and I'm sure the newest member will be no exception. To Emily and Jake Louis, hi. Another big round of applause for David, everybody. And now we have the maid of honor, Carly Seminar. Hi, everybody. Hi. My name is Carly, and I am one of Emily's best friends. Emily and I met back in the third grade in Mrs. Manny's class 18 years ago. Emily moved to Niskuna from New Jersey, and I was not so sure if I liked this girl at first. <laughs> I can still remember the first moment Emily walked into the classroom. She was wearing a cute skirt and top, and I was wearing athletic gear, as normal. <laughs> we then duped our friendship out on the rec soccer field, where I promptly beat her, and we were inseparable after that. I blindly followed Emily through our childhood. We would regularly belt out, I'm a Barbie girl, at her computer screen, eavesdrop on John, and give my sister makeovers, and generally just create chaos. We progressed to forging our parents' signatures every other Friday, senior year of high school, in order to stay home and watch scary movies, and that was your idea. <laughs> they did, in fact, find out despite my deep desire for it to be discreet and quiet. Our bond only became stronger as we got older. I fondly remember the time Emily agreed to go on a Caribbean cruise with my family. It was our first time cruising as a family, and my parents decided a porthole was the first correct introduction to going on a cruise. Emily gracefully endured the most cramped conditions in a 10 by 10 room with my entire family. She also experienced the pleasure of slipping in somebody's vomit late to dinner that, that, that time. And she, she was inducted into our family as the fifth member after that. I then took, one, took, took things one step farther and decided it would be fun to follow Emily to college. This ended up being the best decision I could have made. Together we created our beloved Space Jam crew with our wonderful college pals. And ultimately, was, this was the place Emily found love. It was fall semester of our junior year when I started to hear about Jake. Emily got quiet one day and told me that she'd met a guy, and she wasn't sure where things were going, but she liked him quite a bit. They had officially met at a chi-fi party and J at Jake's fraternity, um, and as Jake and Emily got more serious, I started to like Jake more and more. I found out that he was a great cook, made Emily laugh, was hardworking, loved wine, and was overall just the kindest person. Jake, I want to say thank you. I want you to know how highly I think of you and how grateful I am that you take such good care of Emily. 
Thanks for putting up with her bougie You are like two peas in the perfect pod. Emily, I could write this speech a thousand times over and still not have the words to describe how much you mean to me, but I'll try my best. You feel more like a sister than anything else. You are the most caring, loyal, loving, and hardworking person I know. Just recently, one of Emily's colleagues reached out to her boss to tell them how spectacular she was as a nurse. She had dealt with two difficult patients with grace and precision, and I thought that sentiment was really, was re really summed her up as a person. Beyond that, she's also secretly hilarious, and I never want to live a day without her in my life. You two truly have a magnificent love story, and I know when I say this, I'm saying this for everybody in the room. We all see the amount of love and joy you guys bring to each other, and it really does inspire the people around you. I love you guys both immensely, and I'm so happy to be here tonight and for the rest of your lives. Oh no. 
I'm ready, baby. Think I'm ready now. Electricity, I'm flying into you. Electric, baby. 